Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. I want to go into something a little bit advanced today. Uh, and, and this is also a, a bit of a breakout session from a much wider um, session that I went through during a recent Enterprise DNA Learning Summit. And it was all about customer insights. And the insights that I wanted to showcase were identifying or grouping customers, segmenting customers. This was a technique in itself, segmenting customers. But then not only just seeing, okay, well, what segment is a customer in in this time period? What segment were they in in a prior period and comparing? And this is where you can get some real value out of your segmentation um, analysis. I've, I've done a little bit, uh, I've, I've put a few videos out there around um, group, dynamic grouping and dynamic segmentation. And that was a core part of this particular uh, example as well. The, the session that lasted for about an hour. I think there was well, almost 250 people live um, to, this, to that particular session. But I want to do a small, a very unique breakout here and show you how we can, some formulas and techniques, um, because you've got to um, understand the modeling techniques as well, how we can um, combine all of these to actually represent what a group was that a customer is in, say, in a prior period, and then what group were they in now, and compare and contrast and see and, and try and identify, you know, which customers were in a, um, a high group, uh, you know, one of our best performing customers, and they, they might have dropped to uh, one of our worst performing customers and or all the reverse you know that stuff is really valuable right because it can really dictate uh you know what your your sales um decision making um you know th um, things you might do around your marketing your advertising all the all that great stuff can be determined by this sort of analysis i mean the way i th one of the one of the perfect real world scenarios for this i think of is that well Say, for instance, you had a customer who you could e quickly and easily identify, well, this was a top customer based on the metrics that we set out to consider a customer you know, high. And then now they've dropped down to one of our you know, worst customers and they're a lower segment. You can break out the customers who are in that group and you can do some really unique marketing. You can send um, you know, account managers out to go see the client or the customer or you can contact them on the phone. Um, you know, and offer them a promotion. You know, all that stuff is really great that can be derived from this sort of analysis. So the, the specific thing that I want to showcase here is this particular, these particular results here around this table. And so what I've done is I've got a, uh, a list of customers who we consider, you know, so I've broken customers out into top, mid and low, okay? And, and I've, um, but I've worked out the customer groups by percentage. Okay, so that's the interesting part. And then what I've done here is I've shown them in a table where I'm saying, okay, well, these are our top customers from this year, but this is what they were last year. And, in that, so, another, and so another thing we could do is we could say, okay, well, these were our bottom customers last year. This, is what, this was the bottom segment of our customer list last year. And this is where they sit now. And so, for example, this is now this particular customer here. They were bottom, but now they're top, Liberty Group. And you can see here why. The results sales last year was 71,000, now they're 438, an increase of 512%. But this 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 number in itself does, you know, it does show some something, but this enables us to create much more additional logic that actually will purely segment customers based on them, you know, being within a specific group. Okay. Now I just want to quickly show you how I actually grouped these customers, because that is quite key. So what I've done is I have created um, my groups based on percentage, where they sat as a uh, from a percentage perspective based on, I think, the sales I used in this example. So if we look at top here, the top group is the top 20% of customers by sales. The mid group is the is between uh, is the 25 to 80 percent of um, based on sales, and the bottom group is the bottom 25 percent of customers based on sales. Okay, that's how I've broken it out. Now, this is how we actually calculate these particular measures. Let's first of all go through this year, um, and that will make it a little bit easier to understand. Now, I want you to I want you to just focus in on what I've highlighted here. Okay, just what I've highlighted here, because the, the 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 wrappers that I've put around this are for a very specific reason. Now, 
we need to return so think about it we're returning a text value here right and so we can do that using selected value we're going to select we're going to go and find we're going to return a result of the group that that customer in is it but we need to run some logic to identify well what group they might be in and so to run that logic what we do is we go filter customer groups so that's that specific, that small table i just created and then we go and run this logic at every single row inside of the customer groups table because that's what filter allows you to do filter is like an iterating table function where you can go and iterate through a specific table and run logic at every single row and the logic that evaluates to true is what is going to uh, retain the, that is what what context is going to be retained and then that is going to ultimately allow us to create um find some sort of value here and so what i'm doing is i'm iterating through the customer groups table and i'm saying well is the customer rank and and this customer rank is just purely a ranking of customer based on their sales is it greater than the total customers so the total customers is the total customers that have made sales that's what this particular variable is doing total uh, counting up how many customers have actually made sales total sales is greater than zero is the current rank greater than the total customer sales times the low column inside this table and the, is the customer rank less than or equal to the total customers times the high column okay so you see low and high here just do a quick let's do a quick recap lower let's to be in the top group you've got to be in the top 20 percent right so you've got to be between 80 percent and 100 percent and so what we're going to do is we're going to do well is the customer rank so say for instance they were ranked um they were ranked so one of the top top ranked right based on um based on sales so is their rank say maybe they were ranked 100 and we had we had, we had 110 customers well is 100 greater than 110 times 0.8 and yes it would be and is is 100 less than or equal to 110 times 1 and yes it is and so what that would evaluate to true and then that customer would be returned in this in the particular group that was um that was filtered based on this logic it's pretty cool right it's pretty pretty cool stuff right and You'll see the key there is that the customer rank needs to be based on this year's sales, okay? Now, when I jump to, say, last year, all that's changed is this. The customer rank is based on last year's sales instead of this year's sales, okay? And so the same logic is running through exactly the same table, but it is being run based on the rank from the prior year. And that's where this would actually be returned the group that they're in the prior year versus the current year. So pretty cool stuff, right? Pretty cool logic how you can actually go and run uh, and evaluate through a table and return a text result. First of all, that's pretty cool. But then it's cool how we can use the same secondary table, sometimes I call them, um, the same secondary table to run logic through but just a, just a small variable in the logic to then go and make uh, go and retrieve a value from a prior period and then that enables us to see the the groups that say a customer would have been in in different time periods in this case i've just done a flat out la say last year but you could do it for anything i mean you could compare quarter on quarter on quarter that's pretty cool right you could create four of these and go quarter um, see what they were for the last four quarters um, you know the same logic would apply the same techniques would apply and it's, yeah it's just cool how you can you know you can achieve that quite effectively inside of power bi so there was a there was maybe a little bit that i um glanced over in, in, in this but that's what the learning summit was all about so you know we had you know, close to two thousand people come to learning summits and they were able to see the full sessions live um so highly recommend coming to those uh, if you uh if, if you haven't already uh, or, or what or return if you have um because there's a lot to learn during these and but these little breakout sessions are great too because i, I find that you can um you know, you can you know, really focus in on a key insight because a lot goes into these models that i developed for the summit so this is a really key technique really key a uh, key concept that you can start utilizing and implementing you know maybe in something that you want to showcase um in in your own models this is all about dynamic grouping so there's lots of different applications for this 
Okay, so the other thing, just just to round off that I found that I find quite interesting, is that this is a really key concept that can't be just deciphered by values because uh, look at this particular value here. This actually increased by 18, uh, 1,800 percent because you see it was a very low base, but still they are not considered a good customer. But you may have thought, okay, well this customer would be good because they've gone up so much, and that's what this particular logic enables us to do. So it's pretty powerful. Okay, I will round things off. All the best. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV and if you can, throw the video a like because you liked the content. Um, I always appreciate that. Okay, all the best.